Right. Now, now, Shane, I will say two things I've heard about you throughout your career is that you're consistent and you're funny. Literally, that's if I can name the top two things, I always hear those things about you. What do you think didn't happen? Because I think you kind of mentioned, you know, you kept getting guest roles. What do you think didn't happen, you know, for us to see you in more sitcoms and in movies? Uh, um, I had, it was a couple different things. Um, I think it was forced vacation from the government. Um, that's part of it because I started rolling. And then um, I had a, when my first son, which I was, wasn't planned, it was like just off of one hit or one hit, you know what I'm saying? I kind of, my focus, I just wasn't focused on it as much. I was more about my son, you know, my son Cameron. And I didn't focus like I was before I had Cameron on the industry. Right. It just, it, I, it, it just, I thought there's no way I'm being like my pops. There's no way. And I'd have a gig and they'd be like, yo, man, we got this audition. I'm like, I ain't missing my son's shit for you. Like, yo, I'm, I, I holler at you when I holler at you. Get at me. And that's it. So um, I think that that was, that's part of it. Why, you know, and part of it was my, I'm a little too non-compromising um, on my style of what I want to do. Right, right. Um, do you ever think being that way, like, you know, kind of put people in position to want to block you from opportunities? Being yeah. that, you know, you're you standing where you stand? Uh, that's part of it, part of it. And also I was so, like, you gotta understand, I'm, I'm, I was very active in the community from the standpoint of, they used to call me a conscious comedy. I used to do shows with, like, the people I worked with, like Dick Gregory, you know, Paul Mooney's like, he's the angriest yellow nigga in the world. He just, oh, get the angry yellow nigga. He used to call me that. And so my pops, my pops is like, yo, what, what's up with this? Is this Fruity Pebble calling you yellow nigga? Call me, call you by your name. But, and then I, I, he, he checked him. And then Paul Mooney's like, oh, I, li I like this nigga. I think I'll, I think we'll keep him around. And so I think I also was doing that. I was also like, you got to understand, I organized buses to go to the Million Man March. You know, I mean, I was like that type of dude. That's my like incense, black love incense. And I was always like, how come ain't no brothers got no books? I was so, I was, I was straddling trying to be comedy man, but I was still doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, that, it kind of, sometimes I would blow stuff off. So it was me and some people wanted to block me. Is there is there any example that that comes to mind of a situation that you had you know experienced and had to go through from someone trying to block you from an opportunity? I mean, every comic got the dress story. All you mother, you all know y'all got the dress story where they wanted me to wear a dress. They wanted me to they wanted to redo Bosom Buddies, and they I had signed to a deal, and they wanted to re. I'm like, look at me, I'm six two. Right. At, at the time, I, I mean, I, I'm too steady now. I was I was like two forty. What are you gonna put me in a dress for? And he was, and they kept calling me back on, you know, uh, uh, you know, and start naming all the comics that did it. I said, what they got to do with me? Right. No. Right. And they kept doing it, kept doing it. And I think that later on I was in another meeting and I, I wasn't mean, I wasn't rah, rah. I didn't call a dude a bitch or nothing like that. And then I get in another meeting with 20th Century Fox cause they was wanting to sign me for some shows and stuff. Yeah. And they said, yeah, but we heard you're difficult. I'm like, what, what? difficult wow. how is that and they're like well um it's just some projects you just wouldn't do and we need somebody that's open to doing the projects we want you to i was like wow the caucasity of you to say that wow bruh and then he said some old ignorant shit we're in the i'm suited and booted like i came suited like i'm suited up you know when nigga, we could be articulate and at the same time we could be down on the block right so he's talking and he said, he said, but look at you, you wouldn't know anything about that. And I had to hit him with low, you mean article five, paragraph seven, if you use my likeness in any way, shape or form, you must consult with me and we must consult pertaining to how the money split up. You mean that thing I didn't know about? Mm -hmm. Are you, and, and so I ended the meeting cause I thought if you act in funny style with me now, yeah, imagine yeah. how bad it's gonna be. And I knew I had stand up as my money maker. So I was like, yo, I'd rather wait for the right deal than to take a deal where I'm just gonna get absolutely face raped. And so, and I just, I, I kept, my stand up kept, kept me afloat, you know what I mean? So. 
And I mean, I, I commend you for it because not a lot of people can stand on their grounds, especially, you know, when, when money's in front of them and opportunities. But for you to see like, hey, you know, this is an opportunity now, but I understand that I can get more opportunities from here. Right. It's definitely, you know, I commend you for, for standing up in something that you believe in. Yeah, uh, we faxed the contract down to down the street to Paramount because Paramount was talking to me too. And I ended up doing stuff for them. They had me doing uh, writing and then I ended up producing for BET. I ended up producing a show called Access Granted for like two years. Awesome. And I was also working with Russell Simmons, uh, a show called One World Music Beat. Right. right. So I started going that direction. And also by me being producing on the show, I could be home to pick Cameron up from school at three. Yeah. So it's like- You got opportunities anyway. Yeah, I can finish it too. Yeah. And I'd finish everything up. And then I'd run and, and be like, and Cameron be standing by the gate. I'm like, hey, I'm here, little man. And I'm, ex I'm excited to definitely talk about what you what you currently have. But before we do, so I know you mentioned um, in an interview that one of the comedians that you would not want to follow is Cat Williams. And recently he came out and said that he feels that he's the best living comedian. What are your, you know, hearing that, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, what the f is he talking about? Really? Look, I, I followed Cat and he was difficult to follow because he got, you got to understand, it's the, it's the star quality and that. Now, Cat is the, a beast. And I ain't, I ain't fronting, you know, he's strong, one of the strongest comics. But don't get it twisted, that initial Cat in the Hat gimmick of being dressed like a pimp was a way to soften what he was saying. So it wasn't like he came out dressed regular. It wasn't like he didn't have a perm and all that other extra stuff that they see, the white mentality and also, uh, you know, black people love that. Like they love to see us in that lowest common denominator imagery. Mm -hmm. So don't get it twisted, that's part of it. And I'm not saying that the nigga ain't funny, but I'm saying that's part of it. But nah, man, he ain't the, I, the funniest, it, the best comic in the history of comedy. Are you insane? Well, yeah, you might be, he might. Did he lick a window or eat a crayon? What? You ain't the best ever. Did you forget about Chappelle? Did you forget about the cast that was the foundation of this shit? So I think sometimes, Kat, you're supposed to big up yourself. You're supposed to feel that you didn't, that dude, you that dude, I get it. End of the day though, you ain't the best, best. 